In this lesson, we are going to be continuing our discussion about counterstrain. This will be the first video where we talk about a very specific area of the body, in this case, the cervical region. The best way to approach the tender points is to discuss the tender points names, their location, where they can be found, and then the treatment position that you have to place a patient in in order to effectively do counterstrain treatment. So let's just get started with the anterior cervical tender points. Tender point AC1, which stands for anterior cervical one, is located on the posterior edge of the ramus of the mandible. And the treatment for counter strain to this tender point is rotation away or RA. Now let's talk about anterior cervical two through six. And really this is kind of easy because we can combine all of these anterior cervical tender points since their location and treatments are pretty much the same. So for all of them, they're found on the anterior lateral tip of the transverse process of the corresponding segment. The treatment is going to be flexion, side bending away, and rotation away, or f sera for short. So AC2 through AC6, anterior lateral tip of the transverse process, f sera That's all you need to know. Anterior cervical tender point number seven is located on the superior surface of the clavicle at the clavicular attachment of the sternocleidomastoid. The treatment for AC7 in counter strain is F stra, so flexion, side bending towards, rotation away. And lastly, the last anterior cervical tender point is AC8. Its location is on the medial edge of the clavicle at the sternal attachment of the SCM. And the treatment for this counter strain tender point is F sera, so flexion, side bending away, rotation away. Take a minute to note that AC7 and AC8 are where the attachments of the sternocleidomastoid are. AC7 is the clavicular attachment and AC8 is the sternal attachment, so definitely don't mix those up. Now I want to pause for a second and point out something. Whenever we're talking about anterior cervical tender points, usually the treatment will involve flexion. And specific to anterior cervical tender points, as you can see, most of the treatments here are f sera. So from AC2 to AC6, it's f sera, and AC8 is also f sera. So the only exception to that rule of treatment is AC1 and AC7, which I've put in red for you here in this table. The reason that this is important to point out is because these two tender points, AC1 and AC7, are actually known as maverick tender points. What's a maverick tender point? Maverick tender points, that's a term that refers to tender points that do not resolve when the muscle is shortened. So if you think back to our overview video of counter strain, I mentioned that counter strain treatment involves shortening the associated muscle, and when that muscle is put in its optimal position of comfort, the tender point is supposed to resolve by at least 70%. These maverick tender points, for whatever reason, do not resolve when the associated muscle is shortened. And as such, the muscle must be positioned in the opposite direction of shortening, and therefore lengthening. These tender points that don't follow the general principles of counter strain are known as maverick tender points. So coming back to our table of anterior cervical tender points, AC1 and AC7 are mavericks because they don't follow the general rules of counter strain. Again, the point here is that for knowing all of the anterior cervical tender points, all you really need to know is that the treatment for all of them is F sera. And then the only thing that you need to memorize are the exceptions or the mavericks. And in this case, there's just two of them. Now, I have some pretty awesome mnemonics to help you remember some of the stuff in this table. First, for remembering the treatment for AC1, you're going to say, AC1 rotates away, son. AC1 rotates away, son. That'll help you remember that it's not F sera, but it's rotation away. For AC7, the treatment is F straw. So I think of flexing a straw into 7-up. 7-up reminds me of anterior cervical tender point number 7. And flexing a straw or putting a flexed straw obviously reminds you of flexion straw, side bend towards, rotation away. But again, the only thing you really need to memorize here is AC1 rotates away, son, and AC7, you want to remember flexing a straw into seven up. If you can memorize those two mnemonics, then the only other thing you need to know is F sera, which is the treatment for all of the other anterior cervical tender points.
Now let's talk about posterior cervical tender points. Yes, there are anterior and posterior tender points all over the body. The first tender point is PC1, posterior cervical one. And on the posterior side, we have two variations of tender points. One is midline and one is lateral. So PC1, the midline or Indian tender point, is located on the inferior nuchal line, just lateral to the Indian. The treatment here is just good old flexion. Nothing else, just pure flexion. PC1 lateral, or the PC1 occiput, is located halfway between the Indian and the mastoid process. The treatment here is going to be E sera, so extension, side bending away, rotation away. PC2 midline is located on the superior surface of the C2 spinous process, and the treatment here is E sera. PC2 lateral or PC2 occiput is located on the inferior nuchal line at the attachment of the semispinalis capitis muscle. The treatment here is E sera. PC3 midline is located on the inferolateral aspect of the C2 spinous process. The treatment here is F sera, flexion sera. This is a maverick point because it doesn't follow the general rule of the posterior cervical tender points because usually on the posterior part you're going to want to put the patient into extension to shorten the associated muscle but pc3 doesn't follow that rule and because the treatment involves flexion it's a maverick so i put it in red from pc3 to pc7 all lateral they are located on the posterior lateral aspect of the corresponding articular process the treatment for all of these lateral PC tender points are E sera. PC4 to PC7 midline is located on the inferior surface of the above vertebral spinous process. And the treatment here is E sera. Now it's very important to remember that PC4 to PC7 midline is located on the vertebral spinous process but on the vertebrae above the number of the tender point that you're looking at. So that's very, very high yield to know that relationship. Lastly, let's conclude the posterior cervical tender points with PC8, the midline one. This is located on the inferior surface of the C7 spinous process. And the treatment here, perhaps unsurprisingly, is E sera. Now, take a look at this chart. As you'll notice, all of the posterior cervical tender points with the exception of PC1 and the exception of PC3 are E sera, right? Extension, side bend away, rotate away. Because when you put a patient into E sera, you're shortening most of the posterior musculature that's associated with these tender points and therefore resolving the tender points. However, PC1 and PC3 are mavericks because they don't follow those rules. And therefore, you put them in an opposite position where you lengthen the muscle. And that's why you have the component of flexion for PC1, the component of flexion plus SARA for PC3. So how do you remember these exceptions? Well, for PC3, you want to remember that 3 isn't E, right? All of these are extension, but 3 isn't E. And then for PC1, I always just say FPC1. You know, it's an expletive. Bleep PC1 because it's just F. So FPC1, F the exception. And obviously, I'm not going to state it, but I'm cursing right now. You know, bleep, PC1. Now, as you guys know, I'm really a big fan of simplifying concepts that seem confusing at first glance. And counter strain is definitely one of those topics. I mean, as you can imagine, looking at these tables, medical students get really overwhelmed with having to memorize all of these different points. But if there's a way to simplify the complexity of this topic into one or two sentences, I think that's the way to approach studying in general. So let's do that now. So if I were to take out just the treatments from the anterior cervical tender points and the posterior cervical tender points and put them side by side, this is what they would look like. You've got your anterior treatments, which are mostly flexion components, and your posterior treatments, which are mostly extension components. And the way that you'll memorize this is by remembering cervical sera, cervical sera, Almost all of the time, you're going to have side bending away, rotation away. And, and if you don't believe me, come back and look at the comparison here. With the exception of the Mavericks, it's all Sarah, right? Side bend away, rotate away. And then you just remember flex the front and extend the end, which is another way of saying extend the back. So flex on the front, extend on the end. That reminds you that with the anterior cervical tender points, we use flexion. 
and on the posterior cervical tender points, we use extension. If you can remember the few mnemonics that I threw out in this video, as well as your maverick exceptions, you are well on your way to dominating counter strain.